Oh, the magpie brings us tidings of news both fair and foul. She's more cunning than the raven, more wise than any owl. Hello, lovely. He, is, <coughs> he says, practically choking to death. <coughs> Today we're taking a look at Under Ashen Skies by Alan Barr and Alex T. Uh, Alex T sent me a bunch of stuff to review. Uh, this was one of them, or maybe he just sent them to me. I don't know, but I'm looking at them, but I got them for free. So take that into account uh, as I go through it and, and give it scores and so on. Uh, this was printed by drive through I believe yeah through Ingram content group UK limited which is lightning source so the print quality isn't absolutely fantastic but I got it for free Beckis can't be choosers um, and drive through is at least convenient uh, for people and if you set up through drive through lightning source doesn't charge you their exorbitant setup fees so you know there's that, I guess. Uh, Alex wears his influences on his sleeve very much. Um, Thousand Dead Worlds is very much influenced by Gateway and the Heechee Chronicles by Fred Pohl. Uh, this is Silent Hill to a very large extent. Um, all right, there we go. See you next time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's very heavily Silent Hill influenced. So this is a horror game. It's really meant for one player to play. Um, and your character starts with no real knowledge of who and what they are. And appears to be in some sort of hellish limbo. As you explore and progress through the world, doing all the things that you need to do in order to survive, you will inevitably uncover memories that relate to your character. And as you uncover those memories, you start to understand who or what exactly your character is, which is a, a great concept for a game. In a lot of ways, um, a Las Vegas works in a similar sort of way. I've toyed with similar ideas um, in other games, um, allowing people to sort of define their character as, as they went along. In this, though, it's kind of random. Um, when you create your character, you can make certain choices. And the system will be familiar to anyone who's played A Thousand Dead Worlds, though the combat system is, I think, a bit better, maybe slightly more conventional in uh, in this one. Um, so, you know, the, the nuts and bolts and so on are familiar enough, and you should be able to cope with them easily enough. But you don't really get to define your character at the moment of inception very much. It's as you uncover these memories and as you move forward through the game that you have to adapt your concept of your character to what you've rolled. That is a very difficult thing to pull off, I would say nigh impossible, <laughs> um, and there are results and so on in the various tables. That can lead to self-contradictory sorts of um, ideas about who and what your character is uh, which it's then up to you to resolve or re-roll or, or, or whatever else but if you're playing single player and not multiplayer and you don't have a GM to pass all these things through yeah ultimately it's a still down to you to make the choices um, and to adapt and there's no overarching idea of who or what your character is for you to guide it through um, which it, it makes things difficult now I've found a way for me to enjoy single-player games I treat them as games master training exercises <laughs> in, in a lot of ways 
Um, and I look back after I've played through the single player and then rework it into a story and then I record it on here. There will be a third part to my um, Thousand Dead Worlds playthrough at some point and I will do a playthrough of this as well at some point. Uh, for those who like those sorts of things, it's just they take quite a lot of effort to produce. Um, yeah, so the, the random tables kind of cause problems for the central thrust of the idea of the game here because you can end up with those contradictory results or things that don't build towards the type of character and uh, trouble you were thinking of uh, you're clearly here because of some transgression or trauma and that is made manifest in the creatures and a nemesis that slowly tracks you down but it might have been a good idea even though it would mean a lot more tables to have streamed the various memories into various types so that you could at least pick and choose what kind of uh, trauma or bad stuff your character had done like you could have had tables for violence or sex or injury or tragedy or yeah, that sort of thing so that you could at least channel the roles into a particular kind of emotion or outcome that you were kind of thinking your character would develop into um, yeah there's a lot of trackers in this there are time trackers there's your nemesis tracker which tracks how quickly that's you know coming in towards you and there's an investigation tracker, something again you know, experimented with in, in various games. Um, yeah, I mean, looking at this, you can see it's mostly tables. So it is, in the majority, a series of tables to give you inspiration and systems for the game loop. As you go out, you explore, you find things out, you level up, you unlock new memories which can have effects on your character and you run into more creatures and eventually your nemesis and your investigation proceeds and so on. I, th I think this tries to split the difference between an idea of who and what your character is that is reflected in the book and your own idea of who and what your character is reflected in your choices when you make the character and you play through. I, I almost want to say it might have been a bit better if in writing the book they had an idea of who and what the, the, the character that you're playing is, what they've done, what they'd experienced and so on, and so you unlocked a very specific story as you played through the game loop. Of course that would reduce replayability and usefulness for multiplayer games because you can play this as a, as a standard RPG should you so wish um, but I think it might have been more effective in terms of the story and its effectiveness. It's fairly evocative could you've used a bit more art I think because it could have infected the book with a bit more um, of the weirdness but overall yeah I mean I like melancholy slow burn sorts of horror um, and this very much fits that and yeah if you're looking for a Silent Hill type game um, or a horror game that you can play by yourself so it's not a, not a bad choice um, in terms of style I mean it is evocative some of its fairly obviously AI art to one extent or another. Um, I have nothing particularly against that, especially with indies who need to save as much money as possible. It could have used a, a, a slight dial up on the weirdness, or if the book had started with kind of very, very conventional art and then ended with very, very strange art, that would have been effective and kind of represented the, the journey through the story as well. Um, but you know, for a small scale indie black and white book with decent writing that is evocative of the setting, and uh, three, three and a half for style. In terms of substance, 
I mean, it is mostly tables. Um, that's going to be intimidating to you unless you started with Rollmaster. Uh, <laughs> uh, but there is a lot of substance. It could have done with a lot more in terms of substance. Um, like I say, streaming the tables, giving you a little bit more control, uh, a little bit more adaptation in the in the channels you want to put your characters through. But you may relish the challenge of, of meeting these random goings on. So in terms of substance, I'm also going to give it a three. Well, actually, I'm going to give it a three and a half uh, for each style and substance. So that is seven out of ten. Three and a half out of five. If single player games are your bag, if horror games are your bag, and if adapting on your feet to challenging role-playing situations and shifts is your bag, then this is for you. But I don't think this is for the casual player or someone looking to just dip their toe into single player games. Uh, this is more of a moderate to advanced type of game for that kind of thing. Saying. In the grim, dark depths of a grim, dark mine, there's a grim, dark man with a grim, dark mind, and his grim, dark pen spends its grim, dark time scratching grim, dark tales for his grim, dark kind. The priest, he says we're wicked, for to worship the devil's bird. Ah, but we respect the old ways, and we disregard his word. For we know they rest uneasy, as we slumber in the night. And we'll always leave out a little bit of meat, for the bird that's black and white. One's for sorrow, two's for joy. 